morning VCC kids. Welcome back to another Sunday. It's really good to have you here with us today. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Ellie and I want to welcome you if you're new today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. And without further ado, let's get started. So today's story is all about Saul on the road to Damascus. So I have another object lesson based on today's story. So Saul, on his way to Damascus, on his road trip, he experienced something amazing. Now, this egg is gonna represent Saul. And I have got this massive bottle of clear vinegar. And we're gonna pour this into the bowl with the egg. So here's the egg, and here is a full bowl of vinegar. And we're gonna watch and see what happens to the egg. Hey everyone, so this is day three of the egg, if you can see this, and now we're gonna see what it looks like. I've decided to do this in the kitchen so there's less mess. So I have taken the egg out of the vinegar and this is what it looks like. All that brown stuff is the shell and the vinegar has disintegrated the shell. So there's no longer a shell and it feels quite squidgy. So this egg is kind of like Saul in today's story. So he goes to Damascus and on the way to Damascus something amazing happens to him and he changes from Saul to Paul. So this shell is kind of like Saul and when we remove it he becomes Paul. So I'm going to explain it a bit better in today's story. Shall we cut it open and see what's inside? Let's do it. <laughs> On the road to Damascus and you can find today's story in Acts chapter 9 if you want to check it out for yourselves. So all this time the disciples were preaching and telling people about Jesus there was a man named Saul. Now he was an enemy of the believers of all the Christians in town. He hated them and he wanted to get rid of them. Now Saul went to the chief priest and he asked for arrest papers so he could arrest people in Damascus for worshipping God. And it didn't matter who they were, if they were a mum, dad, children, grandparents, if you were worshipping God, he was going to arrest you. The chief priest allowed it and gave him the arrest papers. And then early the next morning, he set off. When he got to the edge of Damascus, he was struck by a beaming light and he was blinded. He fell to the ground because he couldn't see anything. Suddenly, a voice started calling his name. It said, Saul, Saul, why are you out to get me? And Saul said, who are you? What do you want? The voice said, I am Jesus, the one you are hunting down. I want you to get up and go to the city. And in the city, I will tell you what to do next. Saul had two companions with him and they watched everything, but they were struck with awe with what was happening. They could hear the sounds, but they couldn't see anyone. After Jesus had finished speaking, Saul got up, dusted himself off and got his companions to lead him to the city of Damascus. Saul ended up being blind for three days. He ate nothing and he drank nothing. Now, in the town of Damascus, there was a man, a disciple, named Ananias. And Jesus spoke to him and gave him a vision. Jesus whispered, 
Ananias, Ananias. And Ananias answered. Jesus said, get up and go to this house and speak to a man named Saul. He's been praying. He has just had a dream that a man named Ananias will come to the house, lay hands on him, and he will be able to see. Ananias protested. He said, but Jesus, this is the man everyone's talking about. This is the man hunting us down. He's trying to get rid of us. I can't go to his house. And I know he's here to arrest us. But Jesus said, don't argue, just do it. Because Jesus had a plan. So Ananias got up, left his house and went and found the house that Saul was in. His hands were shaking when he found it. He was so nervous. The door opened and he saw Saul standing there. He said to Saul that he was Ananias and he was sent by Jesus. He placed his hands on Saul and this is what he said. Jesus sent me so you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. As soon as he said these words, Saul was suddenly able to see again. He got to his feet and hugged Ananias. And on that day, he was baptized. Saul spent days with the Damascus disciples. Then he went right to work, preaching and telling everyone about what Jesus had done for him and how his life had completely changed. But the important thing is, his life changed and he told everybody what Jesus Christ did for him. The thing that I like about today's story is this sudden change of Saul. His heart changed, his job changed. I think he had to move house. Everything changed for him because he witnessed Jesus. How amazing is that? His life turned upside down because he met Jesus. You know, this story still happens today. There are people in the world, like Saul used to be, who hate Christians, who hate people who worship Jesus, and they arrest them and put them in prison. And it doesn't matter who they are, kids, mums, dads, grandparents, and they lock them up and they put them in prison. Here are the top five places where this is a really big issue. So number five, one of the worst ones is Pakistan. Number four, Libya. Number three, Somalia. Number two, Afghanistan. And number one, the worst one is North Korea. And these are the top five countries in the world where you can be put in prison and sometimes killed for being a Christian and reading your Bible. But there are about 50 countries that still do this today. And there's still people like Saul doing this to Christians in other countries today. But there are lots of organizations and charities that are helping these Christians who have to live out their faith in secret because if they tell people, they will get arrested. So I wanna share this story from this charity called Open Doors about a boy who has to keep his faith secret and what happened to him. So let's watch the story right now. Hi, my name is Hami. I live in Iran where it's dangerous to follow Jesus. My parents are Christians, but in secret. We go to church at Pastor Malad's house. I love Pastor Malad. Every week he tells us all about Jesus, how he died for everyone and wants people to be friends with God. One day, we were on our way to church when we saw Pastor Malad being taken away in a police car. When we got home, Mama explained, Pastor Malad has been arrested and now he's in jail. Why? For teaching us about Jesus and how much Jesus loves us. So Pastor Malad went to jail for us? Why would he do that? Because Pastor Malad follows Jesus. 
Jesus loved us so much that he died to save us. And Pastor Malad was so full of Jesus' love, he chose to share it with us, even though he knew he could go to prison for it. What will happen to Pastor Malad? I don't know. But with Jesus, there is always hope. I know you're worried about Pastor Malad, but Jesus tells us we can trust him instead of worrying. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Should we pray for Pastor Malad? It's horrible to think that there are people in the world that are put in prison because of what they believe. But don't worry, there are still lots of things that we can do to help Christians in these countries. You can pick a charity and donate some money. Maybe you could do some fundraising at school. Number three, pray. We can always pray for those in these countries. Open Doors have lots of resources that you can check out with your parents at home. Also, please check out these prayer sheets designed by Open Doors for you guys to pray at home for these Christians in these countries. We're gonna pray for these people later, but for now, let's head to craft. Hey everyone, welcome back to craft, and today we are making secret churches, like this one. So what you're gonna need for today's craft is a shoe box or a box in your house. You're gonna need scissors, paint, or coloring pens or pencils and some Lego or dolls or bits that you can put inside your secret church. So let's get started. So grab your shoe box and you're gonna take a pencil and start drawing a door and a window and you might wanna put in a secret door. Now that you've drawn out your windows and your doors, you're gonna need an adult to help you with the next bit because they're gonna cut out your windows and doors. if you've got paint at home, but if you don't, you can use pen or pencils. by putting in some people and some furniture. So look around your house and see what you can find to put inside your box to make it look like home. All right, here we have the secret church scene. So this is mine. I put mine on stills. And here are the, here are the police. 
who are going to raid this house because they think they're doing a secret church. And here is their car and then some trees for decoration. So let's open up the house. Here we go. So here is everybody in the secret church. Now these guys, we he will raid through the front door but I have made secret exits for everybody to exit. So we have Chewy who's in the kitchen and we have a secret exit down the bottom so they can escape through the bottom of the house. Then we have a secret exit right here through the back of the house. And then we also have one that goes to the roof right here. So we have three secret exits. And also, in case of a speedy getaway, we have around the back a racing car, just for extra protection. So all these guys and BB-8, who for some reason has joined this scene, and Chewy, are all safe and free to get away through all the secret exits. Make sure to send in a picture of your secret church into BCC Kids at bcc.life and we would love to see them and put them up on the website. And I'll see you again next week for more. Bye! So to finish our session today, let's all pray together. Put our hands together, close our eyes and bow our heads stop us from any other distractions. Lord, I want to pray for all our friends, our brothers and sisters and our neighbours in these countries, Lord, that are imprisoning Christians just for what they believe, Lord. I pray that you would protect them. I pray that something would change in all of these countries that are still hurting Christians, Lord. I pray that they will not feel alone and you would speak to them, that you would touch them, Lord, that you would touch the government of these countries to have a change in their system that this would not happen anymore. Lord, we surround all our neighbours, all our brothers and sisters in prayer right now. Amen. So I hope you enjoyed today's story all about Saul and I'll see you again next week for lots more. Bye!